Good evening, YouTube. I want to show you a replay. <laughs> I'm not playing Hellsinker right now. Uh, I'm going to be showing you my, I think, best 1cc. I hope this is a one credit clear. Because if it's not, I'm going to be here for an hour watching this. <coughs> I think this is right, though. I think this is it. I haven't watched this recently, <laughs> but I believe this is a uh, one credit clear of the game. <laughs> I don't have a plan for this, so I'm just going to be talking off the cuff, I think. So, you know, um, I'm sure I'm using strategies and stuff here, and I will probably recall what most of them are. So, I think I think my, my strategy to get the score that I got was just to... Um, get as many immortality bonuses as possible. I think that's what I wanted to do. So I'm going to try to keep my Stella as high as possible. And I'm going to be gathering as many life chips as I can, and I'm going to be building spirits where possible. I believe that's the strategy here. I'm trying to remember exactly what year I did this, um, this replay in. I think it was like... 2014, 15, something like that. I think maybe 2015 is right. Something like that. Yeah. So you can see here, <laughs> my Stella has been steadily going up. And I'm just trying to keep it as high as I can get it. So, like, I'm going to be very careful to grab all of the life chips here. And you can see that I already got uh, up to immortality right there, up to immortal. I set my max lives as low as possible so that um, I can get those score bonuses instead of extra lives. Because, like, I don't need the extra lives. <laughs> you don't need extra lives if you don't ever die, right? So it's better to get points instead if you're uh, playing for score. <laughs> My Stella's all the way up at A right now. That's as high as it goes. <laughs> I just gotta keep it there. Or at least, no, you want it as high as it goes, I think. See, I'm not detaching my chariot right. Well, I didn't detach it right there because I wanted to be able to grab the heart pieces. Uh, and I'm just letting it kill all the drones while I keep my Sol meter maxed out with power-ups. Okay, here's the first boss. What's this guy called? Quiet Minstrel, right. So, uh, when you wanna, I believe the best way to build spirits with this uh, Kagura weapon is to keep those uh, little flashes, those like muzzle flares on the chariot on top of an enemy. I think every character has their own, I don't know what the term for it is, I'm gonna call it spirit zones, um, areas near their weapons that when placed over an enemy hitbox build spirits on that enemy. Um, I don't remember exactly what the terminology is for that. <laughs> I'm just going to call it Building Spirits. For some reason, that seems right. So, I'm just trying to keep my chariot close to his uh, body segments. <laughs> just toss my chariot up on top of him like that, and let it passively build some spirits. A lot of scoring in Hellsinker is about milking the boss for as many spirits as you can get off him. And I don't do that in this run because I don't enjoy that kind of gameplay. It's not fun to me. I don't like it very much. It's, it makes me kind of kind of kind of mad. Kind of sad face. I'm not I don't know what my hotkeys are for expression. Sorry. <laughs> Is this going to go automatically? Or do I have to press Oh, oh, okay. Proceed. <laughs> There's my next immortality bonus from previous uh, stage scores. I'm just gonna get the unchained bonuses on these guys because at that point I had learned how to um, dodge their lasers fairly well. They're kind of scary. I mean, I, I don't like them very much. And I'm gonna grab those green chi chips to get my Stella up higher. And I'm gonna try to grab all of those heart chips, get as many as I can by staying down the middle. It's okay to take a few hits, because your bootleg ghost uh, can deal with that for you. 
I'm not really interested in building spirits on anything that's not a boss, I think. Because I I'm... At this point, I was still playing to clear the game with a respectable personal best, I think. Uh, I wasn't really interested in the ultra high tier scoring of the game because, like I said, that's mostly just milking and I really don't like that kind of gameplay. Fortunately, uh, there's a lot more to Hellsinker than just that. You can have uh, a blast at, with the game without even like trying to play for score. Oh, those little birds there. When you kill the wings, more spirits are built up on the body. So that's that's important. That's a scoring tactic, not tactic, but that's just a thing that you gotta do to get more points off of. I don't know, there's that little, uh, yeah, yeah, these guys have spirits too. So like, if you toss your uh, chariot up on top of their faces like that, you can build one or two extras being careful there to generate those life chips. <laughs> I'm gonna do it again here, probably. I had to wait till he sets up his second wave of drones, then pop him for life chips. There's your next immortality. 160 spirits right there. It's great. And because I got my Stella high enough, you see the secret phase of this boss at the end. This boss is kind of scary. Like, even after having a lot of experience at the game, she's still kind of intimidating. And I do make stupid mistakes uh, when fighting her. Maybe not in this run, but generally speaking, um, I do make dumb mistakes when fighting this girl. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, that's kind of a scary pattern, isn't it? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Oh, another thing. Those lasers, like the long needles, you can get a lot of spirits by grazing those. That's another way to get a lot of spirits. Graze the needles. You have to have your suppression field up in order to get those extra spirits, but it's worth doing, for sure. And, oh, here we go. This is always really cool. And that's a scary pattern too. I don't know if I actually kill it here. I think I go all in and yeah, I use my iframes to kill her. Snag a revive. <laughs> Give me one sec. Be right back. Okay. Do we have audio? Yeah, we're good. I want to clarify something here. I did not choose this weapon for scoring reasons. <laughs> I I'm playing the uh, I'm playing Chariot Kagura because it's a little bit similar to our type. <laughs> I think so. So I'm very comfortable using it. It's also pretty versatile. Uh, it's a very versatile weapon that. Excuse me. I'm just I'm watching. <laughs> I got a little bit absorbed there. <laughs> Um, how do I how do I describe this thing? It's like th this weapon does a lot of different things. You can very fluidly switch between doing them, um, and you can move at different speeds easily too. Like um, while you're docked with the chariot, you go real fast. You zip all over the screen, and you have a high power, straightforward attack. You know that like that double blaster that goes straight ahead. That's really strong. It does a lot of damage. It depletes your Luna pretty fast, so like you can't do it all the time, but it's really strong. Um, I like being fast and having a strong weapon that goes straight ahead in shoot 'em ups. I like that kind of character. But also, you can detach the chariot and have it sit somewhere shooting in three directions. I'll do it again pretty soon, but you've seen it already. <laughs> and those, like the three directions that it does are very helpful. Um, up left, up right, and down. It's really good having a downward facing weapon in this game. <laughs> Especially when you can toss your, uh, have that weapon shooting from the top of the screen and be in a different place from it. 
there, uh, there's a spot at the end of this level where that's really helpful for me, and uh, you'll see it. You'll see it when we get there. I'll point it out. Um, but in general, it's very helpful. Also in stage four, um, I think it might be just a step ahead here with these missiles. Yeah, yeah, you can see I'm using the three different uh, turrets on the chariot as barriers to block the missiles with just uh, a lot of gunfire. <laughs> it's a really cool strategy. <laughs> the chariot is so much fun. I love the chariot. I love its design, too. The way it looks is super cool, also. <laughs> I think I might do it again here. Yeah, there's a bunch of missiles coming from the bottom. So with those three different uh, spreads of laser fire, I'm fine. I'm perfectly clear. It's great. <laughs> I imagine that as Fossil Maiden, you'd have to rotate your gun downward to block most of these. Minogame has a lot of like weird stuff he could do. I have no idea how Deadlier is supposed to live through that. Maybe he um, like tosses the mistletoe down and then he sits right on top of it or something. I don't know. <laughs> Stage 3 is pretty... This version of Stage 3 is pretty relaxing. Pretty easy. You gotta be focused still, but it's not near as... Uh, oh, excuse me. Not near as panicky as a lot of other stages. Go for the green again. Green means go. Get that Stella. There's a lot of life chips in this stage, too. It looks like I might have died at one point because I didn't get an immortality there. <laughs> These Terra Chips are good to grab, but they're not ultra vital. Excuse me. Grab those life chips, that's how you get your points. <laughs> oh yeah, so you see when my chariot is shooting at these birds' wings, they drop a ton of Stella Chips. You can use that to very rapidly increase your Stella, which I'm going to do right there. See that? That's cool. Stage 4 might be my favorite level in the game. I think I said previously that stage 6 was my favorite. Stage 4 is also really, really good. I don't know. Like, all the visuals in this game are excellent. Every set piece, every background, all of it's gorgeous in my opinion. It's so good. It's dated a little bit, but it looks really nice regardless. You can build spirits on these guys too. Oh, there's an immortality. 360 spirits for that. Yinny. Grab those life chips without getting hit. Grab that Stella. Yeah, don't grab the purple one. <laughs> Build some spirits on this guy with your bomb. Get his ass. <laughs> Just crush up. Easy. Yep, and do it again, yeah. They drop tokens that get your Stella back up right away, so you can do that multiple times. I don't do it from the last one there. Might have had a reason for that, might not have, I don't know. <laughs> Just grab some spirits off these guys too. And you get an unchain bonus too. That's also nice. You want to get those unchains every time you can. Now, I don't, I don't get every heart chip here, but that's another immortality. Pretty close to my most recent one. Now watch this, watch this. These missiles are what I was talking about before. You gotta use, you gotta have something between you and those rockets. And the chariot does a great job at that. I have to be a little bit careful here. Sneak through all these bullets or uh, dissolve them quickly if I can. Get a decent unchain there. Get into a good rhythm of popping these guys without getting hit. You see, uh, the ones that, those, um, those revenge bullets are dangerous. Each, uh, chained enemy releases two revenge bullets when they die. So, that's kind of dangerous. I got hit there. Not great. I died. That's not good. Down to four lives. That's not great either. Get as much as your cell back as you can. Now, this first section of the dragon fight is always, like, really scary to me. 
<laughs> I'm not good at it. But I think I actually ace it this time. Yeah, yeah, I just, uh... There you go. <laughs> I use the chariot to do good damage to both of them. And then when one of them pops, the other is almost down, and I just use my high-power forward attack to take it out. You gotta use your bomb a lot in this fight. <laughs> Or at least, you know, you can. I think it's good. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> the, um, the latter stages of this fight are a little bit esoteric to me. I don't know exactly how they work, but it looks like you can build spirits on the larger, or maybe all of the discs he summons. So maybe this is another milking opportunity. Though I don't do it. <laughs> I might not have even noticed the spirit thing until right now. Huh. Ooh, okay. Uh, let me read this. One second here. Upon exiting the canal, I was greeted by a flawlessly paved road. My path was occasionally beset by great walls, but they did not hinder me. There was one, however, a membranous barrier of more recent construction that took some time to bypass. Perhaps it was put in place by some organization in the hopes of stopping its competitors from venturing further inside. Though it did delay me, its long-term effectiveness proved lacking. No doubt whoever built it was in a hurry. I had no need to guess what their cause for haste was. I needed to ask only the silent remains of the no longer living, their testaments, embedded in the cold stone or lying in piles on top of each other, told me but one thing. This place was a graveyard for those who were cornered while fleeing the dragon. I advanced through the graveyard. Not far beyond it, I came upon an otherworldly barrier, smoother than any glass or metal. Enthralled by its luster, I took a step forward and was already lost in an uneven, interlocking maze. The area was swarming with the lifeless prayers, a mechanical samsara reviving them after each destruction. In other words, I had already arrived at what could be called their stronghold. What stood before me was a mere corner, the smallest part of the structure. In the middle of that bizarre, inhuman regularity, the stimulation riding through my blood shaped filling my ears with an inaudible cacophony. A faint, almost undetectable change in the atmosphere. My mind wandered, entranced by the steadfast rhythm cut out by whatever it was that lay within. The womb of a creature built of different materials than us, of a different sort of life entirely. Its entrance a surreal, winding path, neither welcoming its visitors nor turning them away. Frozen with perfect accuracy, a body beyond our understanding, like the intricate nest built by a colossal insect, with us stealing inside, intruders uninvited. And now the intruders turn back, heading for the core. The prose in this game is very weird, but it's kind of cool too. <laughs> I think this one had, good, had some good imagery. Of course, it's talking about stage five. Of the calendar. I wonder if I have time to talk about lore for a second here. Uh, the robots we've been fighting are called prayers. And prayers have souls in them. They're not like machines built in a factory. They are, um, I guess alive, kind of. In a way, they're living creatures because they have a soul in them, but they're not, they're made of, you know, like you said, glass, ceramics, and metal. Um, and this is where prayers come from. Inside this, um, I don't remember if there's a, what the name of this level is. Oh, there it is, Soul Cathedral, up there in the corner, first floor. Um, yeah, when a prayer dies, its soul travels back here um to the calendar to the uh yeah to the calendar 
where it is revived with a new body. So this uh, this this war between Graveyard, the organization the players work for, player characters work for, and the prayers has been going on and on for a long time now. Because you can't defeat the prayers permanently. They always come back. Uh, the calendar brings them back to life. And even if you destroy the calendar, it's going to resurrect itself eventually. <laughs> This is where they reincarnate. It's it's a really interesting uh, concept for a fictional setting. And why the prayers have souls or not is kind of a spoiler thing. I I've been thinking about doing a YouTube essay video on the lore of Hellsinker and the setting, putting all of that information in one place. I don't really want to... I mean, I want to do it, but I'm so busy, right? Like, where are you going to find the time to make one of those? Like, I barely have time to play video games at all, as it is. <laughs> That's why I don't really play shmups that much anymore. I still like the genre, but it takes too much time to, like, actually get good at them. I don't have the time. I wish I did. I don't. <laughs> Not with everything else I'm doing. It's cool having, you know, proof of <laughs> me being good at them at one point, though. I don't know. Is, is it a spoiler? I feel like I shouldn't mention it. <laughs> I feel like I shouldn't explain it. There's my next immortality. 440 spirits. <laughs> this level's really cool. It's not... It's, it's still on rails. But you've got this geometry moving around you that makes you interact with it very differently than every other level. <laughs> you gotta take advantage of the seal mechanic a lot here. Maybe you've noticed, but when I get real close to enemies, they have this little word, this little like seal icon pop up on top of them. When you're right up next to an enemy, it can't shoot at you. <laughs> it's That stops them from attacking, which is uh, very important. This is the calendar. I love this one. All of those turrets have uh, spirits on them, which I'm sure you can build to higher values if you play the game right. <laughs> I'm not good enough at it to do that. Though. This is what makes the calendar a really unique fight though. It, it summons these uh, weaker enemies to fight for it between each phase of its battle. And you know you can you can get you can score off all of these guys too if you put your mind to it. <laughs> What's this thing called? A wrist defenser. Yeah, it's similar to the uh, the stage one form of Rex Cavalier, but it has a different name though. This attack's kind of scary if you're not prepared for it, but you can just do that. <laughs> this attack pattern's really cool too. It's got this little cursor, uh, and it you know generates those fire bullets behind the cursor, so you have to like plan ahead and not be in its path. It's kind of cool. There's a much nastier version that it's going to do later. Grab the green. Keep your Stella maxed out. Don't let it drop. This guy sucks, too. Or at least, <laughs> he is if you aren't, like, really psyched up for him. Look at that. That's that's kind of nasty. Look at all that stuff coming down. I have to bomb there for my own safety. Losing Stella. Down to eight. Down to seven. But it's fine. It'll go back up. I love these peacock bullets. Those are so cool looking. That's so nice. I love it.
This guy's also pretty mean. I feel like I'm saying that about a lot of stuff, but... <laughs> I, I guess a lot of the uh, enemies in this game have their own unique way of being mean to the player. <laughs> you can't seal this guy's body parts, though. So watch out for that. You won't die if you bump into him, though. Take advantage. Now this... This is... This is sucks. <laughs> that blue flame... I think it moves around randomly. Or, you know, the cursor moves in, like, a, a much less predictable way than before. You know, when it was using red fire, it always go in a straight line, but this time it's just all over the place. Now, I don't know for certain if it's random or if it just looks random. I don't know. This boss has a little bit of dialogue. <laughs> could pause the video and read that. I missed it. Now, this person, you know, you can tell she's not a prayer. She's a uh, human. She is one of the executors sent to the Cardinal Shaft on a previous mission. This is the third attempt by Graveyard to take over the tower. She was, I guess, assimilated into the Perpetual Calendar's memory. And so it's able to generate a copy of her uh, here for this boss battle, which contains her consciousness, by the way. Um, she speaks to the player, so, like, she knows kind of what's going on. I don't know. It has her memories, and it has her thoughts. I don't know, I guess there's something of her that's still in there. Just kind of spooky. She's got her own, like, um, abilities that she uses here. You know, her own unique ability as, as an executor. She uses a lot of mistletoe, too. So I guess the, the calendar can create mistletoe if it wants also. Kind of interesting. Now, I, I don't know for certain or not if the calendar is, like, forcing her to battle or if um, she's choosing to do that, because I don't know exactly how it works. And of course, there's no answer to that question. But one could argue that maybe, you know, having been part of the system, she understands what it is and why it's there. And so maybe, you know, it's better the graveyard doesn't get what they want out of this situation. Who knows? Now, am I gonna do it? Wait, am I gonna do it? No, I don't think so. If you keep your Stella really high at the end of this fight, there is a special phase. Or maybe it's not Stella. Maybe there's some other condition. But <clears throat> the calendar does have another stage of its boss battle beyond that one. It's really cool. I think I've only gotten to it once. The great clock fell silent. As if in response, the prayers disappeared from the area. The unarticulated, warbling horn was no longer audible either. We pushed onwards through the unsatisfying quiet. A presence became apparent. Ahead. Excuse me. A presence became apparent ahead, growing stronger as we drew closer to the remnants of those left behind. The uh, executors who died previously. The silence only served to intensify our fore foreboding. We could find any number of reasons for the location in which the great clock was constructed. We could, but perhaps they took the eventual destruction of their womb for granted. Perhaps they saw it as a part of some process whose details remain a mystery to us. Or perhaps it was a trap. We had several reasons to suspect as much. First, our progress had been too easy so far. We had advanced along a straight path, with no need to detour. With each iteration of our analysis, we arrived again at the conclusion that the road was their birth canal. But as far as we could tell, we had seized victory from the jaws of defeat, and so we ignored the significance of that fact. But then there was the second reason. The resistance we encountered while fighting inside the engine of rebirth was unexpectedly weak, barely slowing us down at all. Perhaps those walls we could not pass were all the defense it had needed. There were reasons why it had to be so. Likewise, there were reasons why it did not matter if it was so. With nothing ever bringing them to a definite end, capitalized, they were eternal, immobile, one could even call them immortal. Perhaps it did not matter if their mother, the Great Clock, was destroyed. It would only revive itself, forever a depressing truth. 
If we were to be delayed along the road ahead, we would become trapped by pursuers from the Great Flock. Once the infiltrators are within the body, it is only a matter of time until they are eliminated. Its status quo was that of eternal preservation of its own life, simply by allowing each event to correct itself. Unless we were able to bring a definite end before the Great Clock revived, we would never escape, and the Equilibrium would restore itself. That which we had fought had enough reasons for it to be convenient to allow us into its own belly, that we could not hope to enumerate a plan for them all. We could but uneasily advance. They were not invincible in combat, but neither were they always easy opponents. That was why we had arrived here from outside so easily. It would be different now that we were inside. But how? We had no answer, so we were left with nothing but vague uneasiness. And that left the third reason. Long ago, when the prayers were still human, what had they thought? What was their goal? There should still be those among us who understand. The prayers were bringing together things that they needed to carry out their own plan. Those who advocate their righteous descendants, believers, posers, and those with no substance, who celebrate each meaningless advance in life, perhaps the that which we now call a sham, a recapitulation already fading away, was meant only as an attraction to those who aspire to true creativity. I don't know what this is about. <clears throat> they hid something away, and its concealed brilliance brought travelers asking what it was and what it was for. No doubt they became as they are for its sake. Their forms were foolish. Excuse me. Their forms were foolish, and they acted with dreadful efficiency, but they always succeeded. Perhaps those forms are the remnants of what they were before. Hope, desire, delusion, anxiety, and yes, walls. Each an object, embodiment of their abandoned humanity. And that was all we knew of them. Did they offer themselves up as martyrs, in eternal prayer, as the dragon's words suggested? When they gained immortal bodies, their senses and values were altered. No, removed altogether. They became unfeeling things, and they were already far behind the comprehension of any living being. We thought of the tower as a nest, and them as bees or ants, or perhaps some sort of vegetation. Were the prayers defending the tower, or did the tower itself prevent some, possess some conscious ability to gather them to itself, which being commands the other? No, their connection cannot be described in terms of master and servant. We wondered in the silence if there was a reason not for that lassitude. Lassitude? Excuse me. We wondered in the silence if there was not a reason for that lassitude, if it was not all preparation for some elaborate plan. The silence itself confirmed our suspicions. The action and inaction of our foes spoke louder than any words. Everything was being made ready for that time, and what we wandered through was but the wings of offstage, the curtain drawn, traversing a tiny piece of hell. Everything arriving below them would be automatically sifted, restricted, as if the tower itself was a colossal filtration device, sucking its nutrients in from the waters at its base, a great tree gathering strength to bear fruit at the end of all eternity. Yes, that is what the seeds of delusion throughout that interminable boredom were. But our speculations merited not even the name of conjecture, they were merely convenient connections, delusions, coincidences. No amount of silent waiting would twist those foolish ideas into truth. The truth hid just out of sight, always too quick to be caught. It fled, diving away just faster than the eye could focus on it. The speculation was nothing but idle entertainment to begin with. Perhaps the conclusion was just ahead, waiting for us to reach it. Thoughts, predictions of the future, hope. Yes, you know the same already, so you cannot avert your eyes. The same words enter my mind as always and become a sign. I forgot this was so long, I'm sorry. The fading scent of sentimentality, or perhaps it should be called a euphoria, tailored to duty. To put it simply, it is moral dignity, rationality, excuses, patronage, common goals. Such things always disappear in the face of the light, regardless of whether they stem from within or without, they are the same. 
things that would only slow the limbs and dull the senses, are better used as a pretext to purge this filthy world. Thin excuses that fly away on the wind are to be used to trick depressing, gloomy comments. And the unnecessary things themselves are to be used as material to define borders, to tear away one's own feelings and illusions, and redraw the line. Perhaps that is how the ceremony that we, who have lost true sleep, used to re re-knit ourselves, should be described. The illusions might be a pleasure, attained without over-rationalizing this boring, depressing operation. A familiar, unarticulated noise warbles far away. Let the hunt begin. So said the voice of nostalgia. good to graze those lasers for spirits. This is probably my actual favorite stage. Uh, stage 6. I love this one a lot. <clears throat> that cutscene has a lot of information in it. Um... <laughs> I'm already losing my voice and we're only 35 minutes in, so I think maybe I'll save the explanation to either the comment section or a lore video that I do in the future. But look right here, look right here. See that seal? There's an invisible, infinitely respawning enemy right there that always drops a heart piece when killed. You gotta abuse that. <laughs> you gotta have patience too. This level's really a test of patience in a lot of ways. I got hit there because I wasn't paying attention. So this mid-boss here, it's called an Elder Mistletoe, I believe. Um, yeah, yeah, it's called an Elder Mistletoe. Which is the same, you know, synthetic combat life form used by Dead Liar, uh, Fossil Maiden, and Old Rose. But why is it here? Uh, in the tower? I don't know. I don't know why it's here on the island of paradise, but it is. We gotta blow it up because it's standing in our way. <laughs> Kagura is a mistletoe too. I don't think she's as old as this one, but she is an older model for sure. The reason why she has so many different weapons and why they're all kind of weird is because her main job at Graveyard at the start of the game is as a weapons testing platform. She um, refuses to work with any human operator, or executor, excuse me. Uh, for some reason, I don't want to say the wrong reason, so I won't say anything at all. Um, and so she was used to test different uh, experimental weapon systems instead. And she uh, brought them with her to uh, the tower. <laughs> Get those uh, unchained bonuses real quick there. Segment six into cut. Now here's the second half, or I want to say actually second to fourth of stage six. The background changes, the mood is a little different too, and that laser is still chasing us. <laughs> these uh, these green birds here are very durable, so you got to be careful. Definitely uh, separate your chariot there. <laughs> you don't want to be shooting right here so you can get those unchained as efficiently as possible. Did I do an extra stage commentary video? I think I did, but it might be private now. I'm not sure. I have a really good clear of uh, the first extra stage. That would be great to show off sometime, if I haven't already. I think I've done it, but I don't know if it's available. See here, 
the laser is actually necessary to get past these blocks in certain chunks of the stage. So it's not just an adversary, it's also a, play, uh, a tool that the player has to take advantage of. I think that's really cool. You can go around these here, but look at that. <laughs> you don't want to get trapped. I'm not taking out these in like the most efficient way possible. Oh, stay away from that. <laughs> Move quickly though, don't get stuck. There's not a lot of opportunities to build spirits or get life chips there, so there's not a ton of ton for me to do. Here we go, the boss battle. The apostles are really tough boss fight. This might be the hardest fight in the game. I love it though. They're so cool. I love their music too. You see that giant sword in the background? That's where the laser was coming from. <laughs> Also, if you look close, you can see a uh, health percentage on top of the sword. That is the combined health of both apostles. I don't do super well in this boss battle. I think I lose a lot of my lives. Because <laughs> they're tough. Ooh, careful. Ooh, I'm tensing up just watching that. This time, for this battle, I opted to kill one of them as fast as possible. Uh, because a lot of their nastiest attack patterns are when they're rapidly switching off. So if you can kill one of them immediately, then the fight is a lot easier, I think. Which one you want to kill depends on your personal preference, though. Now, here's the last quarter of the stage, which is uh, an enemy rush. Look at all of these guys. <laughs> this part is relentless. Careful. The music is also really good. It's cool that the boss music continues through this part of the stage. It's a really nice touch. You can, you can build spirits on that guy too, but I only got one. <laughs> Can I get two? No, I'm killing him too fast to actually build any. We arrive at the sword at the end of the stage. Use your bomb. There you go. <laughs> this sword is the, the key to stage seven. I don't know how that works, but it is. <laughs> Whew. 42 minutes. And I haven't hit the, uh, the shrine just yet. Or is that right now? Okay. Let me get some water. They will laugh if I tell them I was watching the stars, but that is the only way I can describe it. I was there before I realized. A foolish thing that happens all too frequently, a curse I must always carry. Surrounded on all sides by pallid, misty stars, shaking in the darkness and then the twinkling lights, paralyzing me. A miniature firmament, like the planetariums of old. A black sky scattered with the tiny lights of existence, each moving after its inexplicable design. Indescribable bubbles, forever between one shape and the next. We borrow names for them from ancient legends. Spirits, souls, ghosts, faint ones. They are the lights of the smallest ones. They clump idly in banks of pale, glowing mist. They rock in the waves, flickering. Their color deepens, growing brighter. They clump together a massive glowing sphere. As soon as its shape is stabilized, it splits apart, streaking away in seven lines. Though seemingly bright enough to burn the eyes, their glow brings no pain. I watch as they wrap around, forming a ring. Before I have time to feel dread, it is gone. I stand at the door. The lock turns. Perhaps that will do for an explanation. The mistake lay with my forgetfulness with having forgotten that it would come sooner or later. Like a smooth liquid, 
sliding into even the tiniest cracks of the mind. It is not unpleasant. Indeed, it is much like falling asleep. There is nothing to do but let it take you. Noticulales. I don't know what that... Oh! There was once a man who said that the faint ones bring dreams. I no longer remember his face, but those words remain. Perhaps I once understood them. It is the graveyard of all those things we abandon and chase from our memories. They pile up, a soaring mountain of regret. The gate to the land of nowhere opens. Bonus stage. I don't personally like the shrine that much. It's my least favorite chunk of the game. So, uh, <laughs> if you look at the side of the screen, you can see that I've lost all of my spirits. Your score gets set to zero when you uh, start the shrine. <laughs> but if you do really well, you can get more than your spirits back. I think you can double them. If you do really well, you can double your spirits by the end. If you do poorly, you'll come out with less than you entered with. So, you know, if you're good at it, this is a, you want to put it off for as long as possible to get the most back, you know. Uh, to double your money, is what I'm trying to say. It's a gamble. Double your money. <clears throat> I know that some players will uh, do the shrine early on because they're not so good at it, so they have a lot less to lose. I don't know. I, I don't think I was delaying it on purpose. That's just how things turned out. Also, you have infinite lives in the shrine. Um, dying a lot reduces the amount of spirits you get at the end, but um, you can't game over here. This can't, th this won't ever be the end of your run. It's just a bonus stage. Putting the chariot right there doing a lot of work. <laughs> Get up. The shrine is another chunk of the game where there's a decent amount of lore that I don't feel prepared to talk about right now. It's pretty cool though. <laughs> I'm gonna say that a lot, huh? The lore is really cool, but I don't feel like talking about it right now. I don't. It's it's 11:55 p.m. <laughs> it's way too late at night for me to do a a deep dive on what all the the stuff that's happening here is. <laughs> This, this boss is kind of rough. You gotta hit him with his own attack here. You can't do damage with your own weapon. There is a reason to hit him, though. I don't know what it is. Or maybe there's not. I'm just doing it because it's what I'm like, used to doing. You can hit him here, though. There you go. Parachips don't do anything here, but they are worth spirits. You still want to grab them. Oh, right. That's what the Terra mechanic is for. Uh, he's shooting fish bones at me. Um, when you run out of Terra, you go to the shrine. Um, so if you run out of Terra early on purpose, I'm getting roasted by this attack pattern. And you know, blah blah blah. I'm sure you can get it. <laughs> this, I'm trying not to get hit here, but I'm unsuccessful with that. This boss sucks. I hate this one. It's not the hardest in the game because it can't game over you, but it's really annoying. I probably do better in this replay than I usually do, but I don't enjoy its attack patterns at all. This one here just really grinds my gears. I'm using my iframes, like, <laughs> I'm really abusing iframes here, just cause fuck this guy. <laughs> oh! No, I don't finish, uh, 
I don't actually complete the shrine here, unfortunately. These uh, little tokens here are all the spirits that I was able to re-earn during the, uh, the shrine. Your cherry can pick up some of them for you. It's got its own item hitbox, which is also a, a really nice thing about the weapon. Oh my goodness, I gotta read again. Okay. <clears throat> Put your tongue back in your mouth. I was called to consciousness by the delicate flavor of mud. One might say I was not feeling my best. However, my injuries, in a bizarre reversal of my body's usual routine of death, I could feel the pain subsiding. Peculiar indeed. No, it wasn't that I was healing. I had merely left my broken body far behind. Like it was nothing more than an illusion, entertained by my poisoned, muddled consciousness. How long had it lasted? I set about investigating the matter as usual. The numbers on the thin, resin object on my wrist bring comfort, but they also tell me that it was almost unbelievably short. My breath is slow and regular, a ritual in and of itself. What was the meaning of all that I saw while abducted from my body? I find nothing tangible in my memory, nothing but a dizzying blur of impressions. There was something important, something important was said. It eludes me, whatever it was. It has escaped, lost in the flood of incomprehensibility. I no longer know what I saw. I am left only with a feeling of exaltation, a heart inexplicably freed from discomfort. Like a sensation from long ago, the ruins of a day long destroyed, its sensation gone with it. Was it a dream? I should know by now that question is meaningless. If it were a dream, then that dream continues even now. Until it ends, the question has no answer. The false life kindled in this body lives on to the sleep of temporary death. One might say that dreams are no more, or that dreams are all that remains. Either way, reality has become populated with demons of incoherent nonsense, like this. Let us consider them to be fanciful abstractions of speech, and proceed to ignore them. Nocticulales. Or is it Nocticucalis? Calais? Oh. There was once a man who said that the faint ones bring dreams. I no longer remember his face, but those words remain. Perhaps I once understood them. Alright, two more stages to go. Beyond the stratified outer shell, a narrow path leads to the center of the tower. In the innermost layer, surrounding the core itself, are twelve doors. They stand in pairs, six entrances and six exits. I feel no fatigue upon seeing them. Indeed, I am relieved. This space is exactly as it was described in the records of the last expedition, proof that at last I remain on course. It is often assumed that we despise constraints and control. If one ignores the implications, that is largely correct. But we do not seek meaningless chaos. Beyond a certain point, situations such as this devolve into madness without goal. We would not wish for more days of boredom, after all. Yes. No doubt a time will come for us to leave that behind, but that time has not yet come, and that place is not here or anywhere. Life continues meaninglessly, a light burning on, hoping for that which cannot be touched. The boss has some dialogue here. I don't know if I can read it, because it goes by pretty fast, but it is it will be there on the screen. Also, if you remember a while ago, the narrator mentioned the dragon's words. I don't know how to do it, but you can trigger some dialogue from the rusted dragon. It, it does have some things to say to you. I don't remember what the trigger is for that, though. It might be something that only happens, like, once. I don't remember, though. Or if there's some other way to make it happen. I don't recall. The background music for this is also really cool. Raise those lasers. Oop. <laughs> Wasn't quite careful enough there. These knights really suck. 
they're trying to knock you into that fire. Because contact with enemies doesn't kill you. But they can bonk you into other stuff for sure. Rex Cavalier. The Supreme Prayer. The commander of all the others. <clears throat> it's really cool that he doesn't have boss music separate from the stage. We just go straight into the fight. Like he was, you know, there the whole time. In a way. I'm not doing great here. <laughs> I don't think I ever go below the line. This isn't like a high score attempt. It's a personal best, probably, but <laughs> I'm not actually good at shooters. I remember at the time being really stressed out about how I was losing a lot of potential immortalities from these deaths, but now I think it's just kind of impressive that I made it to the end of the game. Perspective changes things. Cause I could I would not be able to do this today. There's no way I could play Hellsinker at this level. We're fighting the spirit kernel now. This is uh, the ghost that gets revived into new bodies. Or not ghost, but the spirit, you know. This one's powerful enough to stay here and fight us for a minute. It looks like a person too, doesn't it? I think the cutscene told us that prayers used to be people. Sounds like a cat, doesn't it? There's a reason for that. Ooh, down to two lives. That sucks. I think you just have to outlast him here. Yeah. There's his text. It's in like a crazy font. There's no way to read this while you're playing the game. I'm not even trying to read it now because I can't do cursive that good. It's not technically cursive. That's the beauty of video, though. You don't have to read it. <laughs> you don't have to read it quickly. You can pause it if you want. I can't pause this, but you could. Kaboom. Keep your dignity. That's the name of the boss music of the first couple stages. You fight him to that themed song, too, uh, if you choose one of the stage ones. Excuse me. We arrive at the center at last, having passed many layers of the shell. It seems to rise forever, a massive pillar piercing heaven and earth. The core of the tower they protected from us, hid from us. No doubt that which this tower once held, doubtless it is enshrined just ahead. Perhaps once this giant sleeping tower was, like now, the fascination of many. Perhaps it was their guardian, their lord. But it is no longer needed. We do not call back to that which has fulfilled its duty. A relic, built and tasked with its duty by humans. It lost its goal, its purpose, it was abandoned. A monument to lost hopes and dreams. They wait, mechanical birds roosting on mechanical eggs. The children of the masters who never returned. It is our duty to witness the last moments of these myriad worlds. We do not need to claim... Oops, excuse me. We do not need to claim to atone for the sins of our forebears. We come, our false sun red in the west, forever in search of a way to wipe away our own attachments and desires. That is all the motivation we need. A final act, suitable to the play we have seen. That is all we seek. Night water tastes so good. Water tastes so good at night. So, oh my goodness. Oh, that's so good. It's so sweet. Mm. 
There was some other stuff I wanted to do tonight, but I probably shouldn't. I should probably just go straight to bed. <laughs> out for those lasers. Maybe seven years ago. <laughs> you gotta graze them though. Get those spirits. This is tricky. See that? And then the middle ones stick around even. Realize my mistake in a second here. Oh no, I don't know. Maybe that one doesn't have a master. Grab those Stellas. <laughs> These rocks you can build spirits on too. I don't know if I'm actually making an effort at that though. Oh, but those ones you can't kill. For some reason you can't break those ones. I don't know why. Hellsinker does its enemy waves. It's kind of funny to bring this up now. Hellsinker does its waves of enemies different than most other shoot 'em ups. In Hellsinker, the next wave of enemies can spawn instantly when you clear the previous. <clears throat> and um, they're not like tied to the overall length of the stage. So if you kill enemy waves fast enough, you can get extra ones uh, for extra points. And you know, those extra waves are usually worth a lot of spirits. Music changes partway through, and we get these totally different looking rares that we just haven't seen before. Like, these ones are not like anything we've battled previously. We fought very small versions of these inside the, uh, inside stage 5. Remember those little ones? These, like, see those red guys? Those are kind of, those are really strange looking. I think those might be the ghosts of prayers that are attacking you before even getting new bodies, but I'm not 100% sure. They kind of look like the enemies in uh, Extra Stage 2, or no, Extra 1. Yeah, they do, kinda. They don't die instantly though, so I don't know what their deal is. Down to two lives here. Remember, we're just trying to beat the game. <laughs> These guys kind of look like the enemies in Radio Zone, too. I don't know if there's a connection there. I don't think there is. But you can make up whatever you want. I'm not your boss. Careful, Bimby. Here you go. There it is. Hellsinker. Fatal Attraction. Drawing these for spirits. <laughs> Incubation protocol. The uh, the fight in this, excuse me, the mechanics in this fight are different from all of the other ones that we've seen so far. You see at the top of the screen there, we have a satisfaction level. <laughs> the boss does not have a life bar. Um, it has a fixed set of patterns that it goes through on a timer. And we have this satisfaction meter, or level. It's a meter and a level that you gotta manage throughout the fight. What level the meter is at at the end of the fight determines which final boss you get. You don't have to, like, where the meter is during the fight up until the second the fight's over doesn't matter. All that matters is the level the meter's at when the last pattern ends. So I'm not really interested in advancing the meter right now. I might push it up when it's convenient, but it doesn't really matter to me at the moment where it's at. I do want those life chips, though. <laughs> Go to great lengths to get those. Those little tokens are boosting my Stella, and I think I'm grabbing them for some reason. I don't know. So maybe just some modifier that I don't 
It's too late at night. Maybe Cog isn't, Cog isn't up right now. This music's really good, too. All of the music in the game is excellent. I don't know why I keep saying this music is really good. <laughs> they all have their own names, too. This one's called, that one was called Title Gear. Integral Force. Look at that. That's what you have to do to live this one. You gotta be like, you know, the innermost cog in this wheel. It's so cool. And because I'm using my uh, sub weapon so much, the game is raining these Stella down items on me. So now I go for it. Now I go for it to get that meter up as high as it goes. Extend. Boom. This is the part of the game, uh, the fight where I try to keep the meter as high as possible. It's constantly draining when you're not enhancing it, so it's good to like keep it up when you can. Now here I go. I go all in on this. Get it up to three. There you go. That's all you need. Level three. Nucleus reboot successful. <laughs> Switching to long-term meta long term metamorphosis protocol. I can't read all that. Awaiting confirmation from root users. Confirmation received. Granting full access to user. May the offspring be granted eternal release. Here we go. This is the real final boss. <laughs> I love this track. I love the design of the boss, too. It's such- it's like an abstract shape, but it's definitely, like, a cool thing that you're shooting at. <laughs> I'm gonna use my bomb a lot, so you won't necessarily see all of its bullets, but... All the patterns are really cool looking. And look at this background change! In sync with the music! It's so cool! It's just so cinematic. It's so cool. <laughs> just fighting. There's not a whole lot for me to say. You just gotta like punish this thing as hard as you can. Did you forget something? We do have something in the lost and found. Is this it? In that case, commencing return of lost item, confirming memories of blah blah blah. Removing all operational cues, disconnecting and turning off. One last thing, we hope you enjoy your storage. You know, I think that, I don't know what that is. <clears throat> that might be an awkward trick. It's shooting mistletoe at us, by the way. Or bullets that look like them anyways. I'm still at two lives. Aha, next phase. Look at all these life chips. You just gotta get as many as you can. <laughs> I'm back up to immortal. I don't remember if there's more text at this point, but the screen is now permanently negative. Hellsinker loves negative filters. I do too. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm playing by instinct mostly here, so I don't think I can really say a whole lot about my strategy. My strategy is just do as much damage as you can and don't run out of lives. <laughs> remember if the boss actually has a life bar that doesn't display on screen or if you're actually just on a timer. Look at that. That's so cool to look at. I'm not looking at it though, right? In the replay though, I'm just going out of time. The end. And that's it.
That's my one credit clear of Hellsinker, coming in at one hour, nine minutes, and 39 seconds, including text reading. That was... I believe there is, like, an ending, you know, dialogue sequence that you can get. I don't know if somebody on a forum somewhere made that up and it's a lie, or if it's a real thing that I haven't seen. I don't know. I have this vague recollection of reading about it being a dialogue between Minogame and Kagura. Maybe that's not real. It's definitely possible that there isn't an ending cutscene. Because the story is continued in the extra stages. Great Majority and Way of All Flesh. I don't know. I've run out of things to say. My throat's killing me. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. Uh, write a comment if you want me to elaborate on anything. I'm gonna go to bed. Have a good night, YouTube. Do the, do, uh, hit the buttons and stuff if you enjoyed this. Sleep well.